Uh, but I liked it so much that I had when I was when I knew I was doing a uh, sermon on peace, I had to look this up and tell it again. I, I love this story, and it's it's um, it's it's a story that took place in on Christmas Eve night, 1914. So many, many, many years ago, and um, something amazing happened. Something that still has the world scratching its head. But you see, it was at the beginning of World War I, and there was this fierce battle. I mean, they were just, both sides were fighting back and forth. It was, it was happening in Belgium. It was between the French and English on one side and the Germans on the other side. And the battle had reached a stalemate, and each side had bunkered down, and they dug trenches. They were about 60 to 80 yards apart from one another, and the space between was called no man's land. And that meant because no one could venture there and survive. Um, it's estimated that over 100,000 troops were involved in this battle, and these trenches went on for miles. The conditions were horrible, and both sides had lost thousands of lives. There were bodies scattered all over no man's land because if someone tried to retrieve them, then they would be shot. So they couldn't go out, retrieve their men, and bring them back. And as Christmas approached, the Germans started decorating some of the trees around their bunkers with candles. And on Christmas Eve, both sides were settled down on their respective sides. And some of the British were playing their bagpipes and singing some of their favorite pub songs, which no doubt brought them some sense of comfort since they were so far away from home and in the middle of war on Christmas Eve. And meanwhile, on the other side, some of the Germans began to sing one of their country's most beloved Christmas carols, Silent Night. And after singing it through several times, something incredible happened. The French and British joined in on the familiar tune. And unbelievably, that night led to a ceasefire that lasted until New Year's, Eve, New Year's Day. On Christmas Day... Each side helped the other bury their dead. And over that next week, they celebrated Christmas together. They played soccer together. They gathered around the same campfires and told stories and laughed long into the night. It was a holy night. Neither side could have seen a week of peace being born out of the singing of a Christmas carol. And yet, that is exactly what happened. A song about the birth of a baby in Bethlehem who would bring peace on earth, brought peace to a war-torn battlefield, and for a handful of hours turned enemies into friends. And this morning we want to look at peace. Because when we think about Christmas, we see that peace is at the heart of Christmas. Amen? <clears throat> you know, just as we talked about hope last week, at the heart of Christmas, Peace is at the heart of Christmas as well. So where did God make his news known first? Think about that. When you think about the Christmas story, where you think about Jesus being born, where did, it, where did he make his news known first? Well, it was in an unlikely place with an unlikely group of people. And Luke has the story in chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. If you want to read the Christmas story uh, on Christmas morning or any time this season, Luke chapter 2 is the place to read. Start at verse 1. We're going to start at verse 8 this morning. Luke chapter 2 verse 8 says, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you what? Good news. Amen. That will cause great joy for all the people. Hey, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. 
You see, the occupation of shepherd was a lowly occupation. It was not one that people just signed up and said, ooh, pick me. <laughs> it wasn't something that people just, you know, couldn't wait to become. This group was a group of outcasts. They weren't allowed in the city. They weren't trusted by the general public. <coughs> Excuse me. Because they often were thieves. And there is a reason that Luke tells this story. Jesus would come not to the proud and powerful, but he would come to the outcast, the humble, uh, those considered last on the social list. To these men, God brought the first news of his son's arrival. You see, the message brought to them was a message of peace. It was a message of peace that was for all people. It wasn't just for a select few. It wasn't just for two or three individuals. No, it was for all people. It was a message of peace for all people. You know, we live in a world today that is a place. It's full of rage. It's full of anger. It's full of violence. People are fighting against one another. People are trying to run each other over. People are looking for revenge. They want to destroy one another. But God has come to bring peace, and that is what is at the center of Christmas. Amen? Peace is at the center of Christmas. And peace was declared on that night to the most unlikely group that didn't understand peace. They didn't understand it because they were outcasts. I think it's interesting to note that in one survey, nearly one-third of those questions said that of all the people mentioned in the Christmas story, they identified the most with the shepherds. Isn't that interesting? The shepherds were average, ordinary people and yet were invited to see the birth of the King of Kings. These people were not the most, you know, they weren't the, the front of the line here. They weren't the ones that people just couldn't wait to hang out with. They weren't ones that people just, you know, were writing stories about these shepherds. And isn't it amazing that God didn't announce the arrival of his son to kings and queens, but he announced it to the poor, lowly shepherds? But see, that's good news for all of us. Because if God's favor was offered to the shepherds, then surely God's favor and his peace is available to us as well, right? I mean, if he's offering it to them, then surely there's hope for me. And we all need peace in our life. We all need the peace of God in our life. It's something I remember growing up. Um, there was in my, When I was in high school, our... Um, our uh, Oh, it's like Partners in Christ, but we just called it Christian Student Union. So CSU is what we called it. And uh, they made T-shirts. And on the T-shirts it said, uh, no, K-N-O-W, uh, or, or no, excuse me, uh, N-O, no, peace, uh, or no Jesus, no peace. I'll get it. I'll get it eventually. N-O, so no, peace. Or no Jesus, no peace. And then it also said, K-N-O-W, no Jesus, no peace. Does that make sense? Did I, did I get that? Did that come across all right? I just kind of butchered it. But uh, So it, if you know Jesus, then you understand peace, right? If we know who Jesus is, if, if Jesus is our Savior, if Jesus is our Lord, if Jesus is a part of our life, if we have him, as our friend and our Savior and our Lord, then we understand peace. And all of us need the peace of God in our lives. Since the beginning of time when sin entered the world and it affected all of creation, we have been at odds with God. The Bible says we were enemies of God. Romans 5.10 says, For if, while we were God's enemies. So we were enemies of God. Sin did not stop there at just separating us from God. Sin also causes us to be in conflict with one another and even ourselves. And it is because of this that Jesus' birth is such good news. It's important that Jesus came. Jesus had to come. He had to have been born. There is this brokenness between us 
and God and us and others and us and ourselves. And we need Jesus to come and be born and eventually die to break the curse of sin. And it's through the birth of Jesus that peace can come and we can be reunited with God through the peace that Jesus brings. Amen? Look at how Paul says it to the church at Coloss. Colossians chapter 1, verse 19. It says, For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now, I like that, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. Isn't that awesome? He brought freedom. He brought peace. In order to perfectly understand peace being ushered in at Christmas time, we must understand that although Jesus arrived in a cradle, his world would lead to a cross. Jesus lived a sinless life. He willingly offered his life through crucifixion. Verse 20 of that, what I just read, Colossians chapter 1, says, And through him, to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Paul says that it is the blood of Jesus Christ that makes peace between us and God. How is that? The only way that sin could be paid for was the blood of an innocent lamb. It was established a long time ago. That's the only way that sin could be paid for. And that lamb would have to be sacrificed. So when Christ went to the cross, he became the sacrificial lamb. That's what his job was. That's what his purpose was. Therefore, Christ's sacrifice paid for the sin that we committed. That sacrifice appeased God's anger toward sin, and it destroys the power of evil in our lives. So when we are being reconciled to God, we are experiencing peace with God. Can I say this? Just because you have peace with God doesn't mean that you won't face any difficulties. There will still be some times that you face difficulties. But here's the thing. Jesus tells us in John 16, 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. He's saying, in me you have peace. With me in your life, there's peace. But he says in the same, in the same uh, verse, he says, in this world you will have trouble. They're both there. He didn't say they're both going to be gone, did he? He says, in me you'll have peace. In this world you'll have trouble. But look at the next sentence. He says, but take heart. I have overcome the world. In other words, yes, there is peace in Jesus Christ. And yes, there is conflict, there is trouble, there is all kinds of things in this world. But Jesus tells us how much he loves us. He says, look, but guess what? I've overcome the world. I've taken care of all the stuff that the world wants to throw at you. I've taken care of it. You don't have to worry about it because through me you will have peace in your life. Jesus didn't say with peace you won't have trouble. He didn't say just because he says, oh, yeah, you, you got peace, you got everything taken care of. No. He says that in the world there is trouble, but he has taken care of that. I have overcome the world. I like what Dr. Tony Evans says. He says this, peace does not mean you won't have problems. Peace means that your problems won't have you. That's pretty good, isn't it? You know, we still have troubles in this world, but with the peace of God, we can navigate those troubles much better. It is so important that we make peace with ourselves. Don't let your past define who you are in the future. Do we not get wrapped up sometimes in, in, in our past? And we think, well, you know, 
I wish I'd have done this, I wish I'd have done that, or I wish I'd have made better decisions, or I wish I'd have said something differently. You can't change it, can you? We can't change what happened in the past. We can't. There, there's no flux capacitor to go get in a time machine and go back to 1955 and change something that happened. I mean, it, it's not real. That was a fictional story, right? I mean, nobody's coming through that. Doc, Doc Brown's not going to help us get back to the, where we need to go to, to fix it so that we can change the outcome. It, it, it's fiction, right? So we can't change it. Why do we dwell on the past? Don't let your past determine what your future is going to be. We just need to allow Jesus to have that peace in our heart so that we understand what he has for us. The day you asked Jesus to be the Lord and the Savior of your life was the day that peace came into your life and you don't have to worry about the sins of the past. Jesus is walking beside you and he will help you to get through those things. Amen? And you may hear people talk about Christmas being the season of Advent. What is Advent? Let me tell you. The Latin word meaning arrival. That's what Advent is. It means arrival. Jesus' first coming was the arrival of God's light of the world. We have our Christmas tree in our living room. We do. And I love sitting in that room with just the light of the Christmas tree. It's so peaceful, isn't it? Anybody else do that? Just go. I remember even as a kid, we, had, we put our Christmas tree in the living room. It was a room that we never went into. But as kids, guess what? I'd go in there and just sit because it was quiet. No TV in that room. It was just the Christmas tree lights. And there's just something about the lights of the Christmas tree that just is peaceful. I think it is all representative of this season. This season is a time of peace. No matter what conflicts we have with family, friends, or whatever, at this season what happens, we come together with peace, don't we? John tells us that Jesus is the that Jesus is the light and he came. The light Jesus came to bring peace. There's another advent that we are patiently awaiting. Right? And Jesus will come again and that gives us a peace that we can live for. So here is what we know. Jesus' peace, it covers our past, right? It meets us in our present, present and is a promise for the future. Think about that. Jesus' peace, it covers our past. He meets us in our present and is a promise for the future. That's who Jesus is. When he brings peace, that is who he is. So what are we to do as we wait for the next advent? The world we live in needs what all of us believers have, the peace of God. Look around you. Would you not agree with me that this world needs some peace? Amen? There's a lot of bickering. There's a lot of fighting. There's a lot of just anger. There's a lot, of, I mean, just a lot of garbage. People need the peace of God. They need the peace of God in their hearts. And we must become people who are willing to share that peace of God with those around us. It is so important that we share that peace. Amen? And as believers, we need to be about making peace. Right? There is enough hate and condemnation in this world. As believers, we need to bring hope and peace to this world, especially this time of year when people are needing it more than ever. People need the peace of God. They need the, the peace that Jesus brings. Do you remember what Jesus said in his most famous sermon ever? We did that this summer. We talked about um, uh, the Beatitudes this summer. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Blessed are what? The peacemakers. The peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. The best way for us to show peace to this world is by showing the world the love of Jesus. And it's through, the, it's through Jesus that we have peace. You know, there's a lot of fighting and bickering going on. Many people don't value peace in their relationships. They live in a constant state of conflict. And have you ever met those people <laughs> that, that, that are just looking for a fight, right? I mean, they walk in the room and you know something bad's about to happen. You ever met those people? I mean, they just walk around angry all the time. 
They just walk, I mean, they just walk around just mad at the world, mad at everything, and they would rather just hit you in the face than look at you, right? Because they're just, I mean, they're just angry people. It's like, man, and you just look at it and you think, you need Jesus. You need Jesus to come and change your life, change your heart. Have you ever, anybody ever watched um, Charlie Brown Christmas this year? Have you watched it this year? Anybody watched it yet? Yeah? Pretty good, isn't it? Um, this, and, and it reminds me of something that Linus says. You know, Charlie Brown's one of those guys that he's perfect. He's always sees the cup as half empty, don't he? I mean, he never thinks of anything positive. He's just always just, I mean, it's the end of the world. And, you know, if you remember um, in the movie, in the, in the, in the, the cartoon, uh, Charlie Brown, is, he's having trouble getting in the spirit of Christmas. And Linus says this to him. He says, Charlie Brown, you're the only person I know who can take a wonderful season like Christmas and turn it into a problem. And can I just say, this is so true for so many people today. There are some people out there that can take the season of Christmas and turn it into a problem. But Christmas is about other things. It's about hope. It's about peace. And in the next couple of weeks, we're going to learn it's about joy and love. So do me a favor this Christmas. Can we make peace the heart of Christmas? And let's share peace with those around us. We need to share peace, do we not? We need to share peace with all those around us. People are struggling. People are hurting. They need the peace of God. Here's what I want us to do this morning. I want us to sing a special Christmas song. If I could have, uh, if Kent could come back and help us this morning. I hope y'all like Christmas carols. Anybody like Christmas carols? No? Yes? We sing them. But I want us to sing Silent Night this morning. Can we all stand this morning? You know, this is a this is this is this song's been around for years. As my first story told us, it's been around for years. And I just think we just need to take a moment and I want you to think about the words that you're singing. Think about the words that it says in this song. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, 